Biden administration is putting the squeeze on unvaccinated individuals to get their vaccine through a couple of mechanisms, but mostly through employer-based mechanisms. Either do it or you're going to lose your job. I think as we consider this policy, whether or not it's wise or prudent, we should just walk through a few groups. There are six groups of people that we're thinking about right now in America. Let me walk you through them. Number one, they're the people who've already received at least one dose of vaccine. I just checked this morning and it's 63% of Americans, one dose. Okay, that's one group. This policy is probably not going to affect them because they've already gotten it. The second group. The second group are people who are unvaccinated, but who already have natural immunity. Now, it's hard to know exactly how big this group is because we don't have terrific zero prevalence data, but we do have one piece of evidence, which is there are a couple of surveys of zero prevalence run by the CDC that says about 20% zero prevalence. There's a survey of dialysis patients from Gemma Network Open that says 18%. So maybe it's about 20%. And this population is largely exclusive from the population that's already been vaccinated. The third group of people are people who are going to get vaccinated anyway. They were going to get vaccinated. They just haven't yet gotten vaccinated. And if you think there's no such people, well, you'd be wrong because the slope of the vaccine curve has just always gone up, 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 up. There's going to be somebody who is going to get vaccinated anyway. So this policy won't affect them. They were going to do it anyway. The fourth group of people, this is a critical group. It's people outside the reach of the policy. Now, the policy won't do a great job of compelling retirees by the way, those are the people who have the highest risk of bad outcomes from the virus from getting vaccinated because it largely doesn't apply to them. It largely applies to people who are working. And there's also that group of Americans who can't get vaccinated, those under 12. And there's a group of Americans who are 12 to 18-ish in whom one versus two doses is a very live discussion. The fifth group. The fifth group of Americans are people who quit in response to this. They actually say enough is enough. I'm not going to work at these companies. And the sixth group are the people who are going to do it as a result of this. So as you think about policy, you got to think how big could these groups possibly be? And is the benefit from getting the sixth group to do it, is that worth the penalty of getting the fifth group to be pushed out of society, really? And I think it's a tricky proposition because your endpoint isn't just the spread of this virus. It's all of the things that matter in the human condition, how well we do globally. And so the sixth group of people, I know we like to say that the unvaccinated are a risk to themselves and others, including vaccinated people, but the truth is they are mostly a risk to other unvaccinated people and themselves because they really shoulder the brunt of the risk. And I do think a fraction of those will increase their vaccination rate. What am I to guess? Three to 7%, something in that ballpark will increase. But I do think there's going to be a real fraction of people who get pushed out of society and that won't be great. It'll be bad for their upward mobility, be bad for their children's future. It'll be bad in a number of ways. And I think if you had to weigh this policy decision, I don't think it's intuitively clear. I think it's quite challenging. The last thing I would say, the fact remains that a huge chunk of people have already been vaccinated or already have natural immunity. And so I think it might be difficult to separate the impact from this policy from what was going to happen eventually anyway, which is a reduction in the amplitude of the spikes of cases. I don't think they will go away forever, but I do think their amplitude will decrease. And I think it'll be difficult to tease apart what this policy does, but I hope some honest brokers go in and try to do it. So those are my thoughts about this policy. Now, I'm not approaching this from a legal point of view. I'm not approaching it from an ethical point of view. I'm just approaching it from a pure empirical policy point of view. There are six groups. You can start to estimate the size yourself and ask yourself if you think, how much juice are you gonna get from this squeeze? So if you like this video, like, subscribe, leave a message, comment below. You know the drill.